before the first day of school, Channel 11's Mike Holden is learning why Bethel Park has changed its school plan. The COVID-19 pandemic has really turned back to school plans upside down. Now, right here in Bethel Park, district officials tell me they're shifting away from in-person learning to a more hybrid approach that they believe will be for the greater good of everyone involved. The Bethel Park School Board is adapting to the ever-changing coronavirus pandemic. Members have now talked about getting rid of a full-scale return to the classroom. The school board president says they're shifting toward a blended hybrid model. Under that new model, alternating groups of students would go to class in person for part of the week. When those students are not in class, they will complete coursework online and participate in virtual learning. Board members say the plan has evolved from the initial model of the all online option or all in person option because of an increase in COVID-19 cases, social distancing concerns, and additional guidance coming from Governor Tom Wolf. District leaders have told Channel 11 repeatedly this boils down to student and staff's well-being and they have to be prepared to pivot. Everything is an adjustment, but just everybody just wear their mask and we'll be fine. Nobody wants to wear them, but hey, it's the safest way to be. And the Bethel Park School Board will now review their finalized plan come August 11th. We're now working to talk with parents about how their kids will adapt to these proposed plans and what it will mean to them moving forward for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in Bethel Park, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. All right, and we have an entire section on our website devoted to back-to-school plans, and you can find it on the homepage of WPXI.com. Restaurant and bar owners plan to give Governor Wolf an ultimatum. They will stand together and open to 100% capacity. The newly formed Southwestern Pennsylvania Restaurant and Tavern Association started an online petition. They're demanding the right to reopen fully. The governor's order limits restaurant capacity to 25%. So far, they have more than 5,000 signatures. The group says it's not fair. The governor singled out their industry for the spread of COVID-19. They say all the order is doing is putting them out of business. Tomorrow, the group plans to deliver the petition to the governor. A spokeswoman for the governor pointed to state and federal public safety agencies that say the closure of restaurants and bars is effective in slowing the spread. There is some progress to report in the effort to restore $600 a week unemployment checks. No deal, but a timeline. NBC's Tracy Potts learned we could see a vote next week. Any bill or a broader, broader bill? Broader bill. Democrats and the White House both report progress in negotiations to provide coronavirus relief. I would characterize the, the conversations as productive in a step in the right direction. In some cases, we're inching along, and others. We're making more progress, but it takes time. The hopeful timeline, a deal by Friday and a vote next week. The White House chief of staff says they've made concrete offers on unemployment and eviction protection, but narrowing down the size of the package is still an issue. Let me be clear. We're, we're, we're not going anything close to $3.4 trillion, so that's just ridiculous. Part of the problem, Republicans aren't on the same page. It's not going to produce a come by a moment like we had in March or April where everybody voted aye. We don't exactly know where Donald Trump is. He says a different thing every day. President Trump raising eyebrows with his comments about the virus in an Axios interview. Right now, I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But that doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. The U.S. on track to log a thousand deaths a day for 10 days straight. Tracy Potts, NBC News. New at noon, Johnson & Johnson has become the latest company to enter into a deal with the U.S. government over its coronavirus vaccine candidate. The government will pay the company over a billion dollars for 100 million doses of its vaccine. Under a subsequent agreement, the government will also be able to buy an additional 200 million doses. The vaccine would be available to Americans at no cost. Johnson & Johnson announced last week that it had started phase one trials in people in Belgium and in the U.S. Right now, police are searching for a suspect who left a man in critical condition on a Pittsburgh sidewalk early this morning. Officers found the man with head injuries lying along Frankstown Avenue in Homewood and rushed him to the hospital. He is listed in critical condition. Another man is in critical condition after a shooting outside a school in Wilkinsburg. Investigators say the shots were fired outside Kelly Elementary yesterday. 
They have a man in custody. Neither the victim or the suspect's names have been released. Hurricane then tropical storm Isaias did some damage. Emergency crews in Philadelphia say they haven't seen this much flooding in the city since Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. More than 100 people were rescued yesterday. High water affected about 200 homes. Some buildings caught on fire. Outside Philly, a possible tornado ripped the roof off this daycare with children inside. And an amazing water rescue. Three men stuck in a creek saved. They were staying on an island near Wilkesbury when the water rose around them. Isaias slammed into the Carolina coast and steamrolled up the eastern seaboard yesterday. And it wasn't just the storm first responders had to deal with. There were, they were also challenged on how to help in a disaster but also stay safe from COVID-19. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is in New York with the latest on the recovery. Millions across the Northeast are still without power after Isaia swept through. The deadly storm leaving behind a trail of destruction spread across a dozen states. Confirmed tornadoes in New Jersey. It was crazy. See it forming right in front of you. It's like, what? Downing trees and blocking the Garden State Parkway. New Jersey's governor declaring a state of emergency. In North Carolina, Isaias shredded homes. At least two people were killed. One minute you're fine, the next minute it's, it's all, all hell break loose. In Pennsylvania, widespread flooding and another possible tornado ripped the roof off this daycare with children inside. We hide in the closet because it, it, it was destroyed. Wow. Trees toppled across the region, knocking out power to millions. The tree is actually up from the, out of the sidewalk, and it came down on this house. It was like a freight train coming through, the loudest sound I ever heard. In Delaware, the powerful winds knocked over a tractor trailer. Even New York City was under a rare tornado watch. A tree fell in Queens, killing a 60-year-old man in a parked car. Another building partially collapsed in Brooklyn. And the next thing I know, I just heard like a boom, like everything just fell down. In all, at least six dead from the storm. The latest disaster in a tough year. As cleanup continues, don't forget that the pandemic is still with us. So help your neighbor, but do it safely. Wear your mask. Keep your distance. Here in New York City, we saw wind gusts of up to 70 miles an hour. And across the Northeast, many roads and rail lines are shut down as the cleanup gets underway. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, New York. Yeah, and as we were talking about over the last couple of days, we really dodged that storm as it was out to our east. Here locally today, we have beautiful weather. We had some fog out there early this morning, but the fog lifted, the sunshine came out, the temperatures are responding nicely in the upper 60s and low 70s. How about those dew point numbers? So down as well, 57 degrees right now. So we've got some drier air in place. It feels very comfortable outside. I need to update that little bar graphic into the comfortable category, it looks like. But here's a look at our winds, too. We've got a little bit of a breeze out there, but a beautiful afternoon is in store for us. 77 degrees for that afternoon high temperature with a mostly sunny sky. Light winds right around 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the west northwest. We are in for a cool night tonight. I want to show you some of those low temperatures and you know, how cool it's going to get in some places as we head into your Thursday morning. I'll do that and I'll show you a look at the rain that is in the forecast as well as we head into the end of the week coming up. Breaking right now, police have arrested two men from Maryland for a robbery spree across three local counties. Police say Rexford Prince Wright and Elijah Sion from Hagerstown, Maryland hit four local businesses since Monday. Allegheny County police say they robbed the get-go in Steubenville Pike in Kennedy Township yesterday and pulled a double-barrel shotgun on the cashier. Investigators tell us they also robbed stores in Manesson and Ross Raver, Westmoreland County, and New Eagle, Washington County. The search for survivors today in Beirut after a deadly blast. At least 100 people are dead and thousands are injured. The cause of the blast is under investigation. Lebanon says it was a, a horrific accident, but as NBC's Richard Engel explains, President Donald Trump is saying a bomb blew it up. 
Much of Beirut is shattered this morning by one of the most powerful peacetime explosions ever. But the will to live remains strong even after this. A survivor this morning found under the rubble. For some, a miracle. Angles show the blast wave crumbling buildings like sandcastles. Traveling faster than the speed of sound, people couldn't get out of the way of the blast. A mushroom cloud hung over Beirut. The governor rushed to the scene and broke down, saying it reminded him of Hiroshima. The shockwave barreled through shops and a church service. But what caused it? The Lebanese prime minister said it was a horrific chemical explosion, suggesting an act of negligence, not terrorism or malice. That 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate, commonly used in fertilizer, was stored at the port without proper precautions for six years. Local media suggest a welder set it off by accident. The government demanded an investigation. Hospitals couldn't cope as the injured streamed in. Thousands hurt, many by flying glass. Dozens were killed. President Trump offering few details, suggesting this was an attack. It was a bomb of some kind, yes. Beirut has seen many wars, but nothing like this. We had it in one explosion. It is a catastrophe. I've never seen something like that. Promises of international aid are pouring in from around the world, and some assistance is already on its way, with plane loads coming from France, Russia, Jordan, all of them sending medical supplies. The United States has said it will provide whatever help is necessary. Israel, which fought a war with Lebanon, says it's willing to provide humanitarian aid, and the country needs it. The country has been going through a serious economic crisis. The currency had collapsed. And that's even before this explosion. So many people simply cannot afford to repair their homes. Richard Engel, NBC News, London. Just devastating. The officer's memorial on the North Shore targeted. New information on two people police are looking for. School has already started in parts of the country, and this is just why we are trying what we are trying to avoid, where kids were spotted in crowded hallways without masks. Nobody can read between the lies. She's an 18-year-old girl. She got a settlement. You saw a little money. You wanted a big red truck. Like Judge Judy. Shiny, shiny, shiny red truck. <laughs> Judge Judy, weekdays at 4 at 4.30 on Channel 11.
You're streaming WPXI now. Your source for breaking news, weather, and original local shows. Murder, mystery, and the missing. Justice Rules profiles real-life crime stories. Tuesdays at 9 p.m. right here on WPXI now. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. This memorial on the North Shore pays tribute to officers who died in the line of duty. But there was no honor when police say these two people vandalized it. Police shared those photos with us, hoping that someone can recognize those people. This is just the latest police memorial vandalized in our area. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer has more on the disturbing crime. It's becoming more and more common to hear about people vandalizing statues and memorials here in the city. And now police are looking for two people who they say took a wreath from this one honoring fallen members of law enforcement and threw it in the trash. My dad was a highway patrolman, and uh, so to hear about this really strikes me at the heart. Local residents are hurt to hear what police say happened here on the North Shore. This memorial for officers who lost their lives in the line of duty wasn't revered but disrespected Thursday night. According to investigators, together this pair removed a wreath from the monument just before 9 p.m. The female police say first removed it and threw it on the ground. Then the male allegedly stuffed it into a nearby trash can. Police say if you know them, please come forward. To take an action like this that dishonors the memory of police officers that died in the line of duty is reprehensible to me. And we also spoke with the chief of police. He came out here this morning to pay his respects at this memorial. Hear why this is so hurtful for him. Coming up in a report I'm working on for five. Back to you. Squaw Valley Park has a new name. The change was approved by O'Hara Council 6 to 1 last night. Neighbors voiced concerns saying the word squaw is a racial slur. The park's new name is non-controversial. It's now O'Hara Township Community Park. Those council members told the Trib since the old name was offensive, they wanted to do the right thing. The lone council member voting against the renaming cited concerns over erasing local history. A local school district will discuss dropping its nickname today. The Penn Hills Athletic Advisory Committee will discuss if they should still be called the Indians. They'll pass along their decision to the school board, which has the final say. If approved, it will be no easy task to remove the name and logo from everything. They would have to repaint the high school gym floor, redo the high school football and soccer field, buy new uniforms and equipment, and rename the Tribe Student Section and Chiefs Cyber Academy. Last year, there were seven Whippeal schools with Native American mascots. In July, Shadyside Academy became the first to drop the name. Some Georgia students are back in the classroom already, and parents and teachers are outraged about what they are already seeing. This first day of school picture is going viral, showing students not social distancing and hardly any masks in sight. Similar crammed photos shared from another high school. It's exactly what we need to avoid. Social distancing and masks and hand sanitizers has, has been like hammered into our heads. And so it's kind of like the new norm. So to not have much of that is a little bit weird and uncomfortable. Hmm. At a third school in that same area, a second grader tested positive on just the second day of school. That teacher and 20 other students are now in quarantine for two weeks and going back to virtual learning. Channel 11 and 11 Cares is helping students head back to school during these trying times. The Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation wants to pack the bus with essentials. It's a technology drive for students in Pittsburgh. You could donate, use laptops or tablets. It's next Saturday, August 15th in the Stage AE parking lot from noon to 4. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Good afternoon. Taking a live look over the city. We've got the sunshine. We've been dealing with some fair weather clouds out there. 71 degrees currently and a wind out of the west northwest at six miles per hour. Check out our visible satellite. You can see those little white speckles coming across the screen. Those are those fair weather cumulus clouds that are dotting the sky this afternoon. This morning we had quite the fog and in fact the visibility dropping to just a half a mile in the Pittsburgh area earlier this morning.
So that fog lifted. It gave way to beautiful sunshine with some clouds mixed in, and that's what we're expecting for the rest of this afternoon and this evening. So if you have any outdoor plans or you're walking your dog later on today, 77 degrees right around 6 p.m. So we are looking at a beautiful low humidity day for us and the temperature at 8 o'clock right around 74 degrees. Enjoy the temperatures tonight, everyone. If you want to open up your windows, get some fresh air in, the lows will be falling down into the mid to upper 50s with about 57 degrees here in the Pittsburgh area. We will have a partly cloudy sky and a northeast wind right around 3 to 7 miles per hour. Check out some of our other low temperatures tonight. Beaver, you're going to get down to about 56. Washington, perhaps about 55, 58 degrees in Greensburg. So we're all enjoying some coolness to the air, especially for August standards as the lows should be in the lower 60s. So that'll be refreshing. As we take a look at your forecast for tomorrow, if you're out doing some swimming or you're out doing anything really, the temperatures will be a little bit warmer tomorrow than what we'll have out there today. The 10 o'clock temperature rate around 71. So notice how the temperatures are recovering really quickly. So we're going from lows in the morning in the upper 50s to highs in the lower 80s. And that is a product of dry air that can heat up a lot quicker in the afternoon. So about 81 degrees for the afternoon high. Make sure you have your sunscreen on if you're heading to the pool and reapply it often. Now some of us will have a chance for a spotty shower for the day tomorrow. And here's why. I've drawn this black line on the screen, which is actually in meteorology what we call a trough. It's an area of low pressure, and when we look at this in the atmosphere, sometimes we can get a little bit of shower activity developing near and along a trough, especially when you have some heating of the day. Here's how it plays out on our storm tracker maps. We get into the afternoon on Thursday. We get some clouds out there to start to build. As the temperatures climb into the 80s, check out where a little bit more of that cloud cover is in the afternoon on Thursday, and it's lining up right where we have that area of low pressure. So there could be a couple. This model may be overdoing it a little bit, but severe weather team 11 will keep you updated. We could have a couple of showers developing in the ridges and some of our eastern counties come late afternoon and evening. Anything that does develop would be kind of moving in from the east. Five day forecast with your weekend always in view. 82 on Friday. We will have a chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm for the rest of the area. Your weekend is always in view. It is still trending hotter. We've got 88 on Sunday coming up. I'll let you know in the 90s return of the forecast and I've got an update to our summer to date rainfall and how it compares to last year, so you don't want to miss that. Thanks. Pittsburgh is becoming known as a great place to work from home. The industries to look at if you want to land a remote job. And the state making sure restaurants and bars follow the rules. How many were warned during the latest round of patrols? Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. We've been following quite a mess. Want to take you live here where there is a water main break. What's new? Lawmakers are expected to move forward on a new round of stimulus payments today. This could mean extra money in your bank account. And what's next? Some of these thunderstorms could be strong. In a matter of hours, we'll know what school will look like for 23,000 children in Pittsburgh. Here are the options they're considering. Count on Channel 11 News for live coverage every morning.
Nobody can read between the lie like Judge Judy. The Westmoreland County Sheriff's Office is now using rapid antibody tests on officers. Sheriff James Albert told the Trib the first time an exposure happened, he had seven deputies who had to quarantine for two weeks and none were positive. With testing delays, he feels these antibody tests will help ease deputies' minds and get them back to work. State police continue to stress the importance of wearing masks. They're telling businesses to enforce all state guidelines, and if they don't, they could be fined. The state police liquor control enforcement officers visited 1,200 businesses last week. They issued three violations and 52 warnings for failing to follow COVID-19 requirements. We have been enforcing it, but we're looking at education over enforcement. We wanted to educate people rather than reach into their pocketbooks. Violations can include not wearing masks, having tables closer than six feet, or having too many people in spaces. Punishment can include fines and loss of permits. If you've been looking for Clorox wipes, better luck next year. Clorox says they've ramped up production, but it's still not enough to keep up with demand. The company's incoming CEO says with the pandemic expected to last well into the new year, plus cold and flu season, it will now take a year for production to meet the demand. The Diocese of Pittsburgh has announced its back-to-school plans, what they're doing that has the approval of an infectious disease doctor. And the new push to let fans in the stands to watch high school sports. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now. What's new? What's now? And what's next? Every morning on Channel 11 Morning News. The Franklin Regional School District has pushed back the first day of class. Now they're going to start on Tuesday, September 8th. Elementary students will have three options, in class, at home, or a little of both. 
High schoolers will pick between hybrid and fully online, no in-person classrooms. Officials say state health guidelines made it impossible to properly socially distance. The Diocese of Pittsburgh has announced its school plans and all students will be able to return to in-person classrooms. The diocese has schools in five counties and that played a big part in the school plan. Channel 11's Shelley Bortz learned the diocese is also giving parents the online option. Students in the Pittsburgh Diocese will have the option to return to face-to-face -face instruction. But in order for this to happen, students' temperatures will need to be taken at home and reported to the school on a daily basis. They will also be required to wear face masks or shields and social distance. So it's challenging to have a rule that fits every single. As many public schools in the area announced their decisions to keep the doors closed, at least for the beginning of the school year, the Diocese of Pittsburgh has done just the reverse. Not only are they staying open, they're also offering a virtual option, ultimately leaving it up to parents to decide what's best for their families. The virtual option, full time, you're online, your children stay home, they're online virtually, or you come in person to the school and we put in place the health and safety guidelines. The reason the Pittsburgh Diocese is offering two options for students, Peduto says, is because there isn't a one size fits all. Unlike public school districts, the Pittsburgh Diocese encompasses five counties. I have four counties that don't have schools within the reach of the Allegheny Health Department. They, they are looking at different numbers than we are. In developing this plan, schools in the diocese formed COVID-19 educational planning teams consisting of principals, teachers, and parents and have been meeting regularly since the beginning of June. Here at Archangel Gabriel Catholic School in Robinson Township, they're fortunate to have four parents on their team who are also medical doctors. We realize that no plan is 100% foolproof. There are a lot of unknowns about COVID-19, but our goal is to allay any concerns they have by showing them that we have a well thought out deliberate plan. In addition to the safety and cleaning protocol in place at each school, this plan includes the scenario of a child or staff member testing positive for the virus. If this happens, the whole class would not quarantine, only those who had close contact with the person. As a, as a physician, but at, more importantly as a father, if I didn't think that our plan was strong enough, um, and well thought out, then I would be keeping my child at home and doing online virtual. Classes for elementary students will start on August 27th. High school students will have staggered start dates. In Ross Township, I'm Shelby Boards, Channel 11 News. And the Fox Chapel School Board is pivoting. It is now considering five days at school. The school board planned to offer a mix of in-line or in online, excuse me, and in-class learning. But according to some parents, that may not work best for elementary students. Some worry shuttling their kids between school, daycare, babysitters' homes could expose too many people unnecessarily. Those parents want their kids in class five days a week. I think the the public comments made me think a little bit more about concerns with what kids are, where kids are going on the other three days. I think I've been strongly influenced by a lot of the comments tonight. The school board plans to vote on its plan on Monday, and we will let you know what they decide. More than five dozen Republican state reps have a message for the governor and PIAA. Let fans in the stands at high school games. They wrote a letter after the PIAA banned crowds last week. Part of the lawmakers' argument is that the governor has said each district should decide how to reopen. Lawmakers wrote in part, should not similar allowances be made for whether spectators should be allowed at a local school sporting event. In the letter, the lawmakers reprimanded the organization. It's a, the organization. It's an independent agency and should come up with a common sense solution. The PIAA said its decision could change depending on how severe the virus is. The Penguins are hoping to take the lead tonight. It's game three in the Stanley Cup qualifying round against Montreal. The best of five series is tied at one each. Faceoff is at eight tonight in Toronto. 
Can't wait for that. As we take a look at our drought monitor right now, I wanted to let you know that we do get a new release every Thursday. So tomorrow we're going to have an update to this map, and it'll be interesting to see with some of the rainfall we've had recently if it helps in any locations. But you can still see that moderate drought in the areas in beige. Here's a look at our summer to date rainfall. We have seen a little more now than seven inches of rain. This is since June 1st because uh, for meteorologists, we look at climatology as June, July, and August for the summer months. 8.6 inches is the average to date. 1.5 inches is how much we are below average. Now take a look at how this compares to summer to date last year. We had already seen more than 13 inches of rain. See the average there again. And so we were already above average by almost five inches of rain. So again, every little bit helps. We got to get out of the drought in a lot of locations. We'll keep you updated on how everything unfolds. We'll have another look at your local forecast and uh, how it will trend as we head into the end of the week coming up. The South Lawn of the White House is now being considered for President Donald Trump's nomination speech. Our Washington correspondent Serena Marshall explains, uh, is now explaining how this plan is far from firm. We are less than three weeks away from the Republican National Convention, and President Trump on Fox News this morning said he may deliver his acceptance speech from the White House. He explained that would be easiest from a security standpoint, which may be true, but doesn't address the ethics questions. This event is often considered one of, if not the highest profile political event for each party. And hosting that event at the White House blurs the lines between official business and campaign business. Ethics experts say hosting the convention speech from the People's House tramples political norms and likely the law. Federal law bars federal employees and federal properties, like the White House or those officials or staff, from partaking in political activity. It doesn't apply directly to the president, but it isn't clear how they'd pull off a convention speech without any campaign crossover among federal staff. The president had canceled his planned convention speech in Jacksonville because of COVID. At the time, they didn't say where he'd be accepting his party's nomination, and officials have said other locations are still being considered. The president's announcement does follow an unprecedented time for both campaigns due to COVID. The RNC still hosting their small pared down convention from North Carolina and the DNC anchoring their mostly virtual convention from Milwaukee. Reporting from outside Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. I drive into downtown going through that commute, driving on the T. It's been really convenient that way. A company founded by a Pittsburgh native is finding jobs for people who want to work from home. The industry is hiring right now. Here you're going on your vacation, Barney. It's the summer of me, your TV vacation destination. You going on vacation, Sergeant? Any day away from you, pile, I consider a vacation. The perfect getaway is right at home. What am I going to do this summer? With me, TV. As always, featuring some of the greatest TV shows ever made. Yes, sir, I'm going to lay around home and just take it easy. You can find MeTV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers.
Watch David Johnson and Lisa Sylvester on Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. Pittsburgh is already ranked one of the best cities for working remotely. A company that specializes in finding people remote jobs says interest spiked 10% in June. Channel 11's Joe Arena found out which industries are hiring people to work from home. If you're working from home, odds are you like it. In fact, most Americans are getting on board with this new way of life. And a company founded by a Pittsburgher is slowly becoming a major resource for those of us making the transition. Getting used to it, not having to drive into downtown, going through that commute, driving on the T. Mm -hmm. it, it's been really convenient that way. Nearly 40% of Americans are working from home today, and Michael Lamparelli is one of them. And right here in Pittsburgh, just like across the country, interest in working remotely has spiked. Right now in Pittsburgh, we're seeing the remote worker population is about 4.9%, which is higher than the national average. Bree Reynolds is the career development manager at Flex Jobs. This company provides freelance job listings for remote and flexible positions and career coaching. Just last month, Bree says the company saw a 10% increase in remote jobs. And as far as jobs and things go that we see that are listed for people uh, who are looking for remote work in Pittsburgh specifically, um, computer and IT is the number one job category. Um, project management, sales, and healthcare and education and training are some of the other big fields. And Flex Jobs is helping to put Pittsburghers in contact with several companies that are now committing to remote working for the long term term. That includes national companies. Just some of the listings include opportunities at places like Adobe, Amazon, Facebook, Capital One, and many more. And Bree says with unemployment numbers soaring, many people out there are benefiting from this new opportunity. And we see a lot of people who've either been laid off or furloughed or who are just really nervous about that happening. And they know remote work's probably the way to go right now. And for the most part, many agree with that sentiment. A survey of 20,000 Americans by Pipslay.com found that working from home is a positive experience and will create tremendous job opportunities. And while Michael says for some it may be a challenge at first, it's all about the right mindset. Self-motivated, I think that helps. I think it depends on the individual. In Pittsburgh, Joe Arena, Channel 11 News. Finding the best mortgage can be a challenge. Our consumer advisor found out about a new tool from Google that can help you buy a home. WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news.
Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. I want to take you live here where there is a water main break. What's new and what's next? In a matter of hours, we'll know what school will look like for 23,000 children. Count on Channel 11 News every morning. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Walmart has delayed the launch of its competitor to Amazon Prime again. Walmart Plus was originally set to debut in March or April. Then it was pushed to July. Now, no word on a new launch date. Walmart Plus costs $98 a year. It will offer same-day delivery of groceries and other items. Buying a home can be a confusing process, to say the least. Now Google has a tool that could make it a little easier. Consumer advisor Clark Howard explains how it works. If you're a first-time home buyer, getting a mortgage is so confusing. Well, a new initiative from Google with the help of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau really can help. Google now, when you search different mortgage topics, You'll come back with the results, you have a bunch of ads, skip those ads, and then down below will be guide information to push you through the various steps and understanding what people are telling you that you're like, uh-huh, but you really don't get it. You'll get it after you read the briefings that Google has. They're very, very topic specific on mortgages. For example, you want to calculate things with your mortgage, you just put in mortgage calculator and it'll give you various ways you can calculate your mortgage. So you want to know what the real mysteries are with mortgages? Well, it's that they don't want you to know anything at the mortgage companies. Now you can know what you need to know just by doing a Google search. I'm Clark Howard. Registration is now open for next year's Pittsburgh Marathon. It's set for May 2nd. Channel 11 told you when this year's marathon was canceled because of coronavirus. And with tens of thousands of runners and spectators, it's not clear at this point if an event of that size would even be possible next year. We reached out to Mayor Bill Peduto's office and a spokesman says it is too early to comment. They'll have a clearer picture as it gets closer. Duquesne Light is urging customers to take advantage of expanded aid before it expires. One of those resources is the Lie Heap Recovery Crisis Program. Income eligible customers can apply for a one time grant of up to $800 to use toward their electric bill. The program is set to end August 31st. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. It's a beautiful afternoon for us. In fact, take a look at those trees. They are barely moving. We've got a light wind. We've got some sunshine. We've had some clouds, some fog out there early, but now we're seeing some breaks and it's a fantastic afternoon. The temperature in Indiana right now, 73 degrees and in Beaver, Washington, the same Morgantown checking in at 74. Our dew point map shows upper 50s. Again, anything under 60, it's very comfortable outside. And anything over 60, it feels a little sticky to you. So really nice dry air in place and a comfortable feel that will last all the way through this evening. In fact, it's a perfect day if you want to do some exercising, you're getting out on your bike, you won't have to deal with that really high humidity, that tropical feel. We're not going to be dealing with that today. We are going to have plenty of sunshine through the afternoon. The temperatures will be climbing into the mid 70s as we head toward the 1 o'clock hour and about 77 degrees during the afternoon. Our UV index forecast for today, it's an 8. It's very high. Burn time is still 15 minutes, so make sure you have your sunscreen and reapply it often. Your sunglasses, you'll need a hat if you're out for extended periods of time. And, of course, you'll want to find some shade from time to time. Good news in the humidity department is it will stay low as we head into the day tomorrow as well. On Friday and Saturday, we're going to start to notice our dew point numbers coming up just a little bit into the lower 60s, the way it looks right now. Of course, we'll keep you updated on that, but maybe a little bit of a humidity to the air as we head into the end of the week and beginning of the weekend. Low temperatures across the area tonight. Butler, Butler County getting into the low to middle 50s, especially outlying areas, the lower 50s. About 56 in Beaver, 57 degrees in Pittsburgh. That is some nice refreshing air that is coming into the forecast as we head into tomorrow morning. If you have any yard work you want to get done over the next couple of days, great weather today, great weather Thursday. Some of us may see a shower on Thursday. I'll show you where in just a second. Friday, we do have a chance for an isolated shower or a thunderstorm in the afternoon. Saturday, great weather to get outside, albeit it's going to be a little bit hotter. Tomorrow, we're heating things up nicely to 81. So after the cool start in the upper 50s, we are jumping up the temperature 
temperatures into the 80s, and that's a product of drier air that is in place, which heats up quicker, allowing the temperatures to respond nicely in the afternoon. East-northeast wind right around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's 9 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Dry conditions for all of us. We get into the afternoon, and we've got an area of low pressure that's going to be kind of setting up right near and south and east of Pittsburgh. So I think some of our ridges or maybe eastern counties, uh, Greensburg into Indiana, you may see a couple of showers trying to develop in this area as we head into late day and evening. Something we will keep our eye on and look how close it's getting to Pittsburgh. So again, you're going to want to keep checking back with the forecast. We'll keep it dry for now, but we'll update you as needed. Friday 82 and here's your weekend. 85 Saturday, mostly sunny. 88 on Sunday and I teased the 90s earlier. Yeah, next week, Monday looks to get to near 90 degrees and the same thing into next Tuesday as we look ahead uh, beyond this weekend. Guys. And time now to check out your local steals and deals. Hey, Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals. And one of the things I love is to have music wherever I go. Now, in a lot of cases, that might be here in the kitchen when I'm doing some cooking. It might be upstairs when I'm getting ready. It might be outside when I'm watering. It might be in the garden when I'm doing the weeding, right? But I want to have music wherever I go. And you can always tell what mood I'm in. By the way, I don't need a mood ring. Listen to the music. You can tell what kind of day I'm having. Now, this is a way that you can have great music wherever you go. This is a company called Speakwa, and it's something called the Barnacle. We have the Barnacle and the Barnacle Pro, and this is made to give you great quality music, great quality sound wherever you are, even in the pool. These are made to be waterproof, dustproof, sandproof, and they're going to be one of the best quality Bluetooth speaker sounds you've ever heard. And they're not going to cost a fortune PS. And by the way, wait until you hear how affordable they are. So I love all the colors and I love the fact that now if you're just outside on the patio having some friends over, you have great music. If you're outside doing some yard work, you have great music. If you're tailgating, you have great music. If all the kids are in the pool, you have great music. Now, this is a great Bluetooth speaker, but the pro you can actually download music onto. So you don't even need your phone. If you're going, hey, I want to go to the beach and I don't want to get sand in my phone. My phone's expensive download up to 2000 songs into your barnacle pro i don't want to have my phone around the pool what if it falls in download up to 2000 songs on your barnacle pro and with the pro you can actually have dual speakers so you can have one source of music going to two speakers at once you can have two separate rooms you can have surround sound at the pool you get the idea so whether you are at home or on the go great music is always a priority Everybody in the family has their own taste. Now you can have amazing quality. And if you go to localsteals.com, these are 40 to 50% off. If you want great sound that you're going to want a million of, trust me, Barnacle and the Barnacle Pro on localsteals.com, 40 to 50% off. On Channel 11 Morning News, we bring you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. That means our newsroom is always searching for new details and new stories. It also means breaking. If it's happening now, I'm on it, bringing you live updates from the breaking news desk. Our crews know the mission, too. We should get this on air now. Brand new confirmed information. Preparing you for what happens next. How will news stories, weather, and traffic affect your day? What's new, what's now, and what's next? Every morning on Channel 11 Morning News.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. The Pirates game in Minnesota was delayed by a drone flying over the field. After spotting it, umpires pulled all the players off the field. According to the FAA regulations, no drones are allowed within three nautical miles of stadiums or major athletic venues. After several minutes, the drone flew off. The game continued. Unfortunately, the Pirates lost. The Bucks have won just two of their first 11 games. A tourist accidentally damaged a 19th century sculpture on display at a museum in Italy. You can see him posing for a picture and leaning on the sculpture. As he got up, he accidentally snapped off part of the sculpture's foot. He takes a closer look at the damage, then casually left the room. He has since been identified. The model for that sculpture, by the way, the wife of Napoleon Bonaparte, and it was the artist's most famous work. Wow. How about mac and cheese for breakfast? A new online study found 56% of parents are serving it in the AM. Oh. I, I have not tried this yet. <laughs> it's so popular, apparently, Kraft is holding a contest where you can win a mac and cheese breakfast box, but that's not all. When you tweet hashtag KMC, Kraft will donate it, donate 10 boxes to the charity Feed the Children. I think your daughter would love it. It does have milk in it, so it's almost <laughs> like cereal. Who doesn't like cheese, right? Yeah. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Music is giving comfort to babies in the NICU. It's the perfect companion during the pandemic when family is limited. Local parents started the program after losing their child. It makes us feel good to help other babies. Spreading joy to the most vulnerable makes us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Proud to be from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Great cars, great people. For a great deal on a Honda, visit shophonda.com.